World War II created major technological and engineering advances, particularly in the field of aviation. Propeller-driven fighters such as the famous Spitfire became outdated through the development of the more powerful jet engine. The Germans led the way with this technology and the Brits desperately wanted to catch up and even jump ahead. The only jet-powered aeroplane that flew for the British Air Force during the war was the Gloucester Meteor. The Meteor had twin engines, but the RAF wanted a single-engine fighter to replace their Spitfires and Mustangs. This led to the development by the de Havilland Aircraft Company of the DH-100 Vampire. The concept was proposed to de Havilland in 1941 and the aircraft's maiden flight was in 1943. However, it did not enter service with the Royal Air Force until after the war in 1946. The early history of formative jet engines and the de Havilland Vampire is fascinating and well worth further research. The Royal Australian Air Force were also looking for replacement fighters at the end of World War II and in 1946 government approval was given for the purchase of 50 Vampire aircraft. The first three were imported from Britain and the remainder manufactured at the de Havilland complex at Bankstown in Sydney. The Rolls-Royce engines were produced under licence by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation in Melbourne. Our aircraft, A79109, was issued to the RAAF on the 10th of November 1950, but unfortunately did not have a very long flying career. On the 4th of February 1951, while returning from an air show in Perth, our aeroplane ran out of fuel and crash landed 13 miles west of Forest, Western Australia. The early jet engines were not very efficient and had high fuel consumption. Our Vampire originally had enough for the trip but had to change plans due to poor visibility, which resulted in even higher fuel consumption. Vampire A79-109 was forwarded to de Havilland for repair and, according to its record cards, never flew again. It ended up at RAAF Wagga, where it was used for airframe training with apprentices. Even though our Vampire did not have a very illustrious career, the pilot who ran out of fuel, Pilot Officer Bruce Gogley, certainly did. When he retired, Bruce Gogley held the rank of Wing Commander and had fought in three major conflicts, World War II, the Korean Conflict and the Indonesian Conflict. While flying a Gloucester Meteor in Korea, Bruce, then Flying Officer Gogoli, shot down a Russian MIG-15 and earned himself a Distinguished Flying Cross and the United States Air Medal. Wing Commander Gogoli certainly redeemed himself for running out of gas. But how did Vampire A79-109 end up in Forbes? Mr. Wal Williams was Health and Building Inspector in Forbes in that era. He was also a keen pilot and president of the local aero club. Here's Wal to tell us the story. Look, the best of my recollection is that it commenced uh, by Heck Dawson, who was the town clerk of Forbes Municipality at the time, and he thought that there should be something on the highway as a, an attraction to Forbes and he applied to the RAF for one of their disused aircraft that could be used to uh, put on a display on the Newell Highway. Uh, he was fortunate in that uh, they agreed and he was able to buy the Vampire Jet for about $200. Uh, one of the local carriers Connie Jones brought it up the Forbes in pieces and we stored it behind Wright Heaton's for a while. And uh, at the time I was president of the Aero Club, so Heck Dawson gave me the job to put it together and put it back up on a pole somewhere. So I enlisted a number of people and 
I got a lot of help. So it was put together, given a coat of paint, together with council's workers. Uh, we put it on a pole next to the highway. This aircraft's a little bit strange uh, to the others in that most aircraft on a pole uh, positioned in a climbing attitude. But because we had a new bridge over the lake and it was up quite high above the aircraft, we thought we'd get more interest in it if it looked like it was crashing into the ground. So it was in a incline downward position. And so now we have an aircraft that's known well and truly by all those people that knew that use the Newell Highway. And so if you want to know where Forbes is, well, that's the place with the jet on the pole. And the jet on the pole has remained there since those early days, even getting wet feet on the odd occasion. The DH-100 Vampire represents the transition from the propeller-driven fighters of World War II to jet propulsion, while still retaining the old build technology. It is made of wood, which has been a problem as far as the maintenance of the aircraft is concerned. Several restorations have been attempted, and it has even been removed from its mount and fibreglass. But even this did not stop the progress of decay. In 2022, it was noticed by a former Air Force engineer that the nose of the plane was starting to droop, and indeed could become a safety hazard. On investigation, it was discovered that the plane had significantly deteriorated, mainly due to the decomposition of the wooden structure. Of course, the residents of Forbes were mortified that their beloved plane on a pole could be lost. Thanks to strong lobbying from the community and outsiders, our council decided to resurrect the aircraft by substituting steel reinforcing in place of the decayed wood. Our icon would be preserved. The reconstruction was started. These images show the complex wooden construction of the vampire's cockpit area. It would have been an almost impossible task to take it back to original condition. The work was delayed by floods and other issues, but with the tenacity of both council and a small band of volunteers, our plane was restored to its former glory. A new generation of Forbes children and our community will now have ongoing memories of Aeroplane Park and visitors will continue to link the name of Forbes with the plane on the pole.